Hey guys, it is finally time for me to talk about Ranger, and this will be my final class video for the initial Mod 16 preview. I may do videos later on towards closer to release, detailing how they've changed, but for now this is my last class video. But before I start, please, if you have a moment, head over to the community tab of my channel and vote in the poll that I have there, and then also comment on my Foundry-related question that I asked a little bit earlier. I'm trying to do a video uh, showcasing some of the community's favorite foundry quests and my own favorite foundry quests before the foundry is gone. So that gives me a little less than a month to put that together. So, and I want to check out a lot of you guys' favorite foundry quests, so let me know what they are. Just my general disclaimer that you should all be familiar with by now. This information is accurate as of March 13th, and it's very possible that this will change before it goes live, or even by the time you watch this video. Also, one final note before I start. The devs have said that Ranger is a bit overbalanced at the moment, and that there will be attempts to bring their damage more in line with the other classes before Mod 16 goes live. So right now, they're a little bit overtuned. So please keep that in mind as you're listening to my fabulous voice. I'm just kidding, my voice sucks. But let's get into it. The two paragons for Ranger are Warden and Hunter. Warden is the paragon that focuses more on nature magic and mixing the ranged and melee combat techniques, whereas Hunter is mostly ranged only. Hunter still has the melee variants of powers, of course, but their, their strong point lies in the ranged combat. We're going to start with Warden, but first let's take a look at some mechanics. Your shift and your tab are going to be the same as mod 15, and prior to that, your tab just switches you from your range to your melee and vice versa. And your shift just gives you a short little dodge in whatever direction that you're moving. The really, really the only mechanic that rangers have is something called grasping roots and this is still pretty much the same as mod 15 but some of your abilities apply grasping roots and that roots the enemy of course and the strong grasping roots last three seconds the weak ones last one and a half seconds and they're 50 percent less on actual people players so we are going to jump right into the at wills but one thing to note is that the powers are split in half between the universal powers that both paragons can access and the paragon specific powers that only your chosen paragon can use. So the two universal at wills for ranger are rapid shot and split shot. And these are both the same as in mod 15. Rapid shot is the one that fires a single arrow really quickly and split shot is the one where you sort of charge up your attack a little bit and fire multiple arrows. And the longer you hold the button, the more accurate the shots will be. The two paragon specific at wills are electric shot and penetrating arrows. Electric shot fires a sort of powered up arrow at your target and it does damage in an area around them. Penetrating arrows fire does damage to all enemies in a line in front of you. Like one arrow just goes through all of them like this. It's this supercharged arrow thing. Like one arrow just goes through all the enemies that are right in front of you because somebody must have done a really good job at sharpening their arrow one day and that just became what they were known for and that's why the rangers have this power. History lessons with silver. The melee variant of rapid shot is called rapid strike and you strike your target at close range. Seems pretty straightforward. The melee version of split strike, split shot, is called split strike. And... You dash forward, striking enemies in front of you. That also seems pretty straightforward. And then the one for electric shot is clear the ground. You slice your enemies in an area around you. So all three of those are pretty much the same as live. Unfortunately, I can't test out the fourth one because... I'm not level 72. Now on to the encounters. I'm going to go through all of these encounters because... Right now, there is no way to view the tooltips for the melee variants of the powers in the power screen. You have to have them equipped first, and then it will show you the melee variant once you switch to the melee stance. So, the first off, we have Hindering Shot. Fire two arrows, it has three charges, and applies weak grasping roots. Melee version of this applies strong grasping roots and slashes their ankles. Like, you're not allowed to walk anymore, I'm going to cut off your feet. 
Now we have Marauder's Escape, and this is the one that you unlock very early on in Mod 15, and it's the one that you dash backwards and you fire off three quick arrows as you fall back, and it confuses your enemies, supposedly. But I, I, in my opinion, it's really obvious, so I don't, I don't think any enemy could get confused by that. And the magnitude of this is actually quite large, surprisingly, compared to something like Hindering Shot or even Constricting Arrow. And the melee version of that is you rush your target and strike them with your weapons. Next up, we have Constricting Arrow, and this is one that was used a lot in Mod 15 by various rangers that I knew, at least. You fire a strong arrow, and it applies strong grasping roots. And the melee version of that is Steel Breeze, and you spin around and slash your blades out and damage everything around you. And you gain 10% stamina for each enemy that you hit. Next up, we have Rain of Arrows. This is one that you unlock really early on as well. And that's the one where you fire some arrows into the sky and they rain down over time. Melee version of that is called Rain of Swords, and it's basically exactly what it sounds like. You strike down with your blades in an area in front of you, and it also applies to damage over time. Now we have Cordon of Arrows, or Cordon of Arrows. Cordon? Cordon. English is a hard language. And this was also really popular prior to Mod 16. This is the one where you aim, you target a specific location, You'll fire an arrow, and any enemy who steps into it gets rooted and takes damage. And this ability has three charges. The melee version of that is plant growth, something that um, an experienced ranger would be familiar with. I mean, I'm not an experienced ranger, and I'm familiar with it. That's the one where you strike your foe, and then plants grow out of the ground. It's like all these little, all these seeds underneath the ground sense the enemy above and then you, you hit them and then like, I smell blood. He sounds like he would make a good meal. And then the plants grow up and snatch him and drag him under the ground and eat him the end. History lessons with silver. That was it for the universal powers. The first paragon specific power is split the sky and that's the one where you fire an arrow, some clouds appear, and then a storm brews and a random enemy in the area of the storm will be struck by lightning and they're slowed whenever they're struck. And there's also has the additional effect of something called defensive lightning. And whenever an enemy attacks you or your allies when they're standing inside the storm, they're also struck by lightning again, and they cannot be struck more than once every two seconds. The melee version of this is throw caution, and you're basically recklessly attacking your enemy. You're like, screw caution, I am just gonna kill them right now. And you reduce your defense by 5,000 and increase your damage by 10%. Next up, we have something called Boarhide. You grant yourself and your allies five stacks of thick skin, and this increases your defense by 1,000 per stack, and taking damage removes a single stack. The melee version of this is called Boar Charge, and you charge your enemy and knock them down. Next up is Fox's Cunning, and this is pretty much the same as it is on live. You and nearby allies dodge the next incoming attack within eight seconds. And then the melee version is something called Fox Shift, you dash to the nearby enemies, slow them, and increasing your own movement speed. Second to last is Binding Arrow, and this applies strong grasping roots. I found a typo! And the melee version of that is, uh, is Oak Skin. It gives you and your allies Oaken Skin. Oaken Skin. It heals you for 9% of your max hit points and increases the incoming healing by 10% for 9 seconds. And now lastly, we have Thorn Ward. And this increases the target's damage taken from projectile and physical attacks by 10%, and each hit refreshes this effect for 10 seconds. Unfortunately, because I'm not level 77, I can't actually equip this power, and since the tooltips aren't available for the melee variants at the moment, I am unable to tell you what the melee version of this is. But it's not a new power, and I'm guessing the melee version is something similar to what it is in Mod 15. Next up, we have our dailies. First up, we have Seismic Shot and Forest Ghost. Both of those should sound familiar to you. They do pretty much the exact same thing. And now we have Snipe. Snipe is a really, really strong single target hit. So something that you would use in bosses for sure. 2800 magnitude, and you line up your shot, and then boom, they're dead. This is something that I feel is one of the overtuned things that they were talking about, because my ranger is pretty bad in terms of gear, enchantments, and so on. And uh, let's just see how much damage it does. Okay, let's line up our shot. Zero damage? What? 
So, you line up your shot. 332k crit. And I'm only 9.5k with no ability scores selected, no boons selected, and no feats selected at the moment. So I feel like that will probably be changed. Okay, moving on to our next daily, we have Cold Steel Hurricane. That's pretty much the same as live. You call down an electrical storm, and it damages and snares foes that come into contact with it. Our last daily is Call of the Storm. You raise your weapon to the sky, causing it to be struck by lightning and deals damage to nearby enemies. The additional action, a lightning enchanted weapon, is what it's called, and your attacks deal additional lightning damage for 10 seconds. To, to be honest, this one doesn't seem super useful. I tried it out on our private test server, and I can't say I was too impressed. Like, Snipe definitely just seems like the go-to daily to me. Now, we are on to class features. The four universal class features are Seeker's Vengeance, Crushing Roots, Aspect of the Pack, and Aspect of the Serpent. So Seeker's Vengeance, whenever you strike from behind, your attacks deal 10% more damage. Crushing Roots, your weak and strong grasping roots now last twice as long. Your weak grasping roots daze the target for half a second, and your strong grasping roots daze the target for one second. Aspect of the pack, if you are within 30 feet of an ally, you and your ally gain 500 combat advantage per ally nearby to a maximum of 2500. Aspect of the serpent, adds a stacking buff on every power you use, increasing your damage by 2% for each stack. If the stacks are added from range, still affects your melee attacks, and vice versa. Each buff stack reduces the opposite stacks by 1. And now, the four paragon specific class features are storm step action, blade storm, Twin Blade Storm, and Aspect of the Lone Wolf. So, Storm Step Action, whenever you activate a daily power, you reduce your encounter cooldowns by up to 2 seconds based on the amount of action points spent. See, this seems not very useful to me at all, because there's a feat that I'm going to get to. There's a whole feat section here that's dedicated to cooldown reduction. Next up, we have Blade Storm. Whenever you deal melee damage, you gain a 20% chance to deal an additional 10% of your attack's damage in an area around you. Now, Twin Blade Storm, every time you hit more than two enemies, deal an additional 8% damage. And lastly, Aspect of the Lone Wolf, gain 500 deflection for each enemy within 30 feet of you, and the maximum bonus is 5,000. Now we are on to feats. Feats are much different in Mod 16. There's no more feat trees, no more heroic feats or anything like that. You have 10 feats, and you choose one from each pair that's listed here. So our first pair here is Death Strikes or Focused. And Death Strike causes your melee encounter powers to cause your next ranged encounter power to deal 10% more damage, and then vice versa, your ranged encounter powers cause your next melee encounter power to deal 10% more damage. And now Focused. Every second that you stay in melee stance, your melee attacks deal 2.5% more damage, up to a total of 25%. The same is true for ranged stance, with ranged damage and switching stances resets this bonus. To be honest, before I go any further, the ranger feats, at least in the Warden Paragon, they all seem pretty good. Like, I can see instances where pretty much all of them would be useful. They all feel impactful, and that is something that I can't say is true for all the other classes. The next pair we have is Swiftness of the Fox, or Storm's Recovery. So, Swiftness of the Fox, your melee powers shorten the cooldown of your ranged encounter powers by 1 second, and Cordon of Arrows and Hindering Shot, basically the ones with charges, reduce the cooldowns by half a second. And then your ranged encounter powers shorten the cooldown of your melee encounter powers by 1 second. We have Storm's Recovery. Using a ranged encounter power reduces your other ranged cooldowns by 3 seconds, and then using a melee encounter power reduces your other melee cooldowns by 3 seconds. Next pair, Blade Hurricane or Storm Conduit. So Blade Hurricane, whenever you use a melee encounter power, you get Flurry for 3 seconds, and Flurry causes your melee at will attacks to deal double damage. And then Storm Conduit, the final hit of Electric Shot, marks the primary target hit with Storm Conduit for 5 seconds. Storm Conduit causes enemies that are struck by another lightning-based attack to deal 10% of the original damage taken to all nearby enemies, including themselves. Next up, we have To the Wind, or Skirmisher's Gambit. To the Wind causes Throw Caution to grant an additional 10% damage boost, so that's a total of 20%. And then Skirmisher's Gambit makes your critical strike reduced by 3,000, but your critical severity is increased by 30%. And lastly, we have Nature's Envoy, or Enhanced Conductivity. 
So Nature's Envoy, whenever you activate Forest Ghost, you're granted Flurry, and its duration is constantly refreshed. And if you remember, Flurry causes your melee at-will attacks to deal double damage. And lastly, Enhanced Conductivity, Call of the Storm, now enhances your weapon with an additional 50 magnitude damage boost. And that would apply on every shot, I would assume. That is about it for the Warden Paragon, but let's take a quick look at ability scores. I have not chosen ability scores in this Paragon, but I did go with Strength and Dexterity in my other loadouts. And although I don't know if those are the quote-unquote best ability scores to choose, that's what I've been doing for testing, and it seems to be working out okay. But ability scores are a lot different in Mod 16. There's no more primary or secondary ability scores, and all the ability scores do the same thing for all the classes, and you just have your initial stat roll and then the bonuses that you choose, or the points that you choose to put in while you're leveling. Dexterity increases your critical severity and movement speed, and strength increases your stamina regeneration and physical damage boost. I chose strength because there is no ability score that increases your projectile damage and in a lot of cases in the combat logs I've noticed a projectile such as the snipe daily being referred to as physical damage. Now we're moving on to Hunter Ranger. I find it a bit amusing that they named a paragon after the original class name. I'm going to skip the universal powers this time around because I already talked about them once and I'm just going to talk about the paragon only ones. So for Atwills, we have aimed shot. You take precise aim and fire an incredibly deadly shot into your enemy. I wouldn't say incredibly deadly because it wouldn't be an Atwill if it was incredibly deadly, but it's a lot more deadly than the other Atwills, a magnitude of 100 compared to 25, 35, 40, 70, you know. And the melee variant of this is called aimed strike, and it's pretty much the same thing but in melee variant, and you have a damage over time for 10 seconds. The last at will is Hunter's Teamwork. You see supplies on an enemy and then shoot an arrow at them to mark their location. And you can only have one target designated at a time. Marked targets drop supplies and they contain hit points, stamina, and action points. And they restore that to the people who pick them up on your team. And that is the same as it is on live. I can't explain the melee variant of this, but it's very likely that it is similar as well to how it is in Mod 15. On to Encounters. First up, we have Ambush, and as the name implies, you are hiding and ambushing an enemy. You gain Ambush and Stealth for a short period. Ambush causes your next attack to deal bonus damage, and it has the added effect of targets take 10% more damage for 5 seconds. The melee variant of this is Bear Trap. You toss a massive Bear Trap at a target location. What kind of enemies are we facing here? Because... The majority of the enemies are not as big as a massive bear. First enemy to walk near the trap triggers it. It has a damage over time, it roots them, and it slows them. And then the melee variant of this. Next up we have long strider shot. Just throw a ship, throw it, throw an arrow. Shoot a swift arrow at your target. And then the melee variant of this is gushing wound. Slice open your enemy. It has a damage over time. A pretty strong damage over time for 10 seconds. And then we have hawk shot. You fire an arrow towards your target and it deals damage to all the enemies in a line. And then the melee variant of this is Hawkeye. You grant precision to you and your allies by increasing the damage of encounter powers by 5% of both you and, and your allies. And now we have Commanding Shot, and this increases the incoming damage to the target by 5% and decreases the outgoing damage to the target. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say of the target. Decrease the outgoing damage of the target by 5%. I found another typo! But that lasts for 10 seconds, by the way. And the melee variant is Stag Heart, and this grants you and your allies the constitution of the star. I think that's supposed to say Stag. Typo number three! And it gets you temporary hit points equal to 5% of your max HP. And there's no duration either. That's broken too. And lastly, we have Rapid Volley. This has five charges, and you rapidly fire a volley of arrows in front of you. Seems pretty self-explanatory. It has a pretty low magnitude, but you're shooting a bunch of little arrows, and that adds up to a magnitude actually kind of larger than even hindering shot would be. Can't do the melee variant of this yet, but I'm sure it exists. Now the dailies. The two dailies for the hunter are Slasher's Mark and Disruptive Shot. Slasher's Mark leaves a mark on the target after you leap to them, of course. Restores your stamina or guard meter whenever the target is hit, and it lasts for 10 seconds. And then Disruptive Shot 
You fire an arrow at your target's head, you interrupt their current attack. And it only costs 25% of your action points. On to the class features. The four Paragon specific class features that we have as Hunters are Aspect of the Falcon, Pathfinder's Action, Cruel Recovery, and Primal Instincts. So Aspect of the Falcon causes your ranged powers to deal 5% more damage if you are within 25 feet of your target. Pathfinder's Action, whenever you activate a daily power, increase your run speed by 10% and deflection by 5,000 for 10 seconds. Rule Recovery, whenever you deal critical damage to an enemy, heal 1% of your maximum hit points, and you can only heal once every 2 seconds. And lastly, Primal Instincts, you increase the effectiveness of the buffs granted by Hawkeye and Stagheart by 20%. That is definitely suitable to be a final class feature that you unlock. A lot of the classes and paragons that I've seen, are uh, their final class feature just doesn't seem useful or isn't impressive or something like that. But that is pretty impressive. And lastly, we have feats. Feats are different between paragons, so we do have to start from the beginning. And the first pair we have is Forest Bond or Commander-in-Chief. And Forest Bond, whenever you apply your Grasping Roots, you reduce the cooldown of all your currently recharging powers by 5%. And then Commander-in-Chief makes Commanding Shot decrease the recharge time of your currently recharging encounter powers by 2 seconds. So basically you're choosing between you reduce your cooldowns whenever you use Commanding Shot, or you reduce your cooldowns whenever you apply Grasping Roots with any power. The next pair we have Thorned Roots, or Critical Action. Thorned Roots causes your strong grasping roots to be upgraded to Thorned Roots. Thorned Roots deal 50 magnitude damage every second, and when you're hitting a control immune target, an additional 100 magnitude damage is dealt immediately. Critical Action for every 25% of action points you spend on a daily power grants you a stack of critical action, and this increases your critical severity by 4% per stack for 10 seconds. The next pair we have is Predator or Biting Snares. So Predator, whenever you use a ranged encounter, you apply Prey to the target, the first target that you hit, and it increases the damage of your attacks against them by 5%, and it lasts for 10 seconds. It can only be active on one target at a time, and cannot be reapplied until it expires. And then Biting Snares. You gain this effect whenever you apply Grasping Roots or Thorned Roots. Biting Snares causes your next stance shift to grant you 10% of your action points, and this can only be triggered once every 20 seconds. The next pair we have is Rate of Change or Long Shot. Rate of Change gives you a 5% damage boost whenever you switch stances. This bonus is reduced by 1% per second and refreshes to full on your next stance change. And then Long Shot. Your ranged encounter powers do 50% more damage, and your melee encounter powers do 50% less damage. So if you're playing basically ranged only, this is going to be a huge buff to you. I feel like this is also going to be something that is going to be changed, because 50% more damage on all of your ranged encounters is ridiculous. And the last pair we have is More Than Disruptive, or Slasher's Expertise. More Than Disruptive causes Disruptive Shot to increase your damage against the target by 5% for 5 seconds, and since this Disruptive Shot only costs 25% of your action points, this is something that you can keep up 100% of the time. And lastly, we have Slasher's Expertise. The debuff that's applied by Slasher's Mark now also increases the ally's damage against the target by 5% for its duration. If we're being honest, Hunter, or sorry, Ranger has more party buffs than a Paladin. Because it has the encounters, a few encounters that either increase the defenses or offenses. It has feats that do it, and now a feat that allows a daily to do it. Well, guys, that's about it for Ranger. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys for watching or listening, as you probably did, or if you did something else, I mean, whatever. In case you missed it at the beginning, please hop over to the community tab of my channel, vote in the poll, answer my Foundry-related question, and I would greatly appreciate it. As always, thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!